Hello everyone, I am the game here and welcome back to more Super Mario Galaxy. In the last episode, we made it to the garden and explored a bit of that, but in this episode we're actually not going to the garden just yet. We're actually going to start by heading into the gate. And we're welcome back to the gateway to the starry skies. We were only here briefly, but it's still a familiar sight. It's still very peaceful and beautiful. But some things are already here, so we don't have to worry about that. Let's say we head up here and speak with Rosalina once again. This planet... It's very dear to me. I looked forward to visiting this planet with the Lumas every 100 years. The Luma that's been traveling with you may also grow up to become a star someday. Some Lumas become planets, some become comets, and a few become power stars. I'm traveling with them while they look for a place to be reborn. But I never thought all this would happen. Wow. Mama must really trust you. Well, how about this? You grab all 100 purple coins here, and then you'll earn my trust too. This is a red star. It holds the power of the red lumas. But the really amazing part about it is it allows you to fly after you spin in midair. Yes, fly! While pressing A, you can pick the direction you want to fly with the joystick. If you collect 100 purple coins, I'll let you use my power somewhere else. Well, let's collect the last pop we've yet to see. The f Flying Mario, as it's described. I feel like it should be called Red Mario, but I guess he's already red. Spin when jumping to fly. And now we have the power to fly through the air. We've achieved actual space travel now. It's amazing. And we're using it for coin collection. Yes. Well, you know why the uh, the purple coins are in this game, right? Yeah. It's because in other Mario games, there's usually 100 coin missions where you have to go around levels looking for uh, 100 coin coins, just like in general. But in but uh, seeing as these level all these levels were fairly short and uh, they're like less connected than other levels are, they instead decided to go with. Uh, just having levels dedicated to collecting these hundred purple coins, which I kind of like. I'm gonna wait for this to time before I get these. You're thinking of a, you're thinking of a different level than the hundred coin missions. It's it's you have to collect a hundred gold coins, like throughout the level, and that's what this is taking the place of. Yeah, it's a, that's exactly what it is. You have to collect eight red coins, and it, it is a different thing. I didn't mean to collect the red star. Collecting red. I guess I can't see your point, but I think the be but uh, I think the reason they did purple coins is to separate from uh, the red coins because the red coins it's always collecting eight, and I think they wanted to do something different with this. Because like I said, this was meant to replace the uh, 100 coin missions in other Mario games. That's called Waluigi. That's Wario. Yes, but Luigi is green Mario. Why are you still talking to me? You're supposed to be silent during this. I'm sorry, I needed to get it out that I thought it was weird. Well, now you get to edit this episode. I'm not touching this episode with a 10 foot pole now. I'm not putting in all the subtitles. Thank you. I do actually really like this level. I like the gate just as a whole, because it's fairly peaceful. 
only missing two, and I know exactly where they are. The worst thing that can happen with purple coins missions, purple coin missions, is just never know where a purple coin is. Alright, this is going out. Well, let's just collect our last purple coin. And get a red star. There, are you happy? There's something red now. Now let's use our red star to go collect the red star. Well, no, I meant, like, why is the prize a red star instead of a purple star? Because it's purple. I don't know. Let's just collect it and move on. Let's get the Mario star. The only one in the game. Oh, he's over by the gate. Anyway. Now that we've completed the gate, there's actually something we else we can do now. Like I said, purple coin missions were meant to replace the uh, 100 coin missions in other games. And they're actually in other levels, but we haven't unlocked it yet. The only way to unlock the other purple coin missions is by beating the final box. And I don't want to do that yet. Because it's the final boss you're supposed to take it on last. So what I'm going to do is off screen, I'm going to take on Bowser. And we're, I'm going to take him on and that will unlock the other purple coin missions. And I know that sounds kind of crummy, but don't worry. I'm going to record that, and that, and when we get to the grand finale, that will be what you see. But uh, I want to be able to unlock the other purple coin missions, and uh, I also want you to see us ta me take on the final box. So don't worry. That's still going to be in the. That's still going to be in the video. You're still going to see that. But we're going to we're going to do some editing tricks for all that. Anyway, on a different note, the red star is now available on the Kong Observatory, and there it goes. Anyway, back to the garden. On the topic of the red star, it's a severely underused power up. It's only used in that one level, and that kind of bugs me. I feel like there's so much more that could be done with it, but they never really do. It's only used in that one level and then becomes available on the combat zone. And it's time for a rematch with a good friend, Guppy! I actually did remember this level, I just, uh, it never came up and it just didn't resonate in my mind. But this was the last level. Oh, you guys are a little bonfire. Screw your bonfire. Meat. It's better not to ask those questions. Listen, they're, they're very focused on survival now. I don't think you want to know what they're trying to eat. It could be one of those crabs. It might be one of these eels. Maybe it's a magic koopa. It's better that we don't ask. This is gonna sound weird. But do you think Koopas taste like turtle, or do you think they taste like something else? I never had turtle, and I don't really plan to. Well, turtle is like every other exotic meat. Oh, hang on. It's gonna taste like chicken. What, you again? You gotta be kidding me. You wanna run me out of this lake? You got to get through all eight rings. I actually forgot what voice I gave him in the past, but I, but then I remembered. Excuse me, sirs. There's not much I can say about this. It's just going through the eight rings again. This time, once again with a shell and bloopers. Who go bloop? You caught a squid. 
do do they not actually bloop? Where'd he go? Down here. Also, I like how the uh, rings ahead of you won't say the correct number until you go uh, through the one behind it. Oh, look, another cheap cheap. Who's actually, like, somewhat threatening because he... Um, I still have to see it, despite the fact that you tried to mess me up by... by changing my direction you tried to cheat and you failed what do you have to say for yourself you cheating cheap oh he looks so sad all right I'm official my award take this I actually started off by not remembering what voice I gave him oh dang it collecting stars underwater my enemy hang on I got this there we go And that's it for the main stars in the in the deep dark galaxy. Oh. Yeah. I I just forgot to talk there. I spaced. My mind went completely blank. I forgot that I'm supposed to be commentating, you know, like a let's player. Oh, speaking of comment, speaking of uh. Uh, stars in the deep dark. We're still not done there. We still have a secret star and, of course, a comet. That being the Daredevil Comet. So let's jump on the ghost ship Daredevil run. And, you know, this fight went so well for me last time. I'm sure it will go even better for me this time. It will go great, cause I have a, cause I'll get a hug from a boo. Oh, worth it. Okay, this time I won't hug a boo as much as I want to. This time I'll actually get on the ghost ship and face off once again against Camilla Koopa. I thought she was gonna spawn quicker, like that would flow. That's one simple sentence. It did not work that way. Aw, oh, you're being nice and giving me a show right away. How kind. You just want to die, don't you? Yes, you do. Ah. Uh, you can find another show with me? Yes. How convenient. Boop. She's actually making this fairly easy, which means now I'm going to suffer. How many hits did she take last time? Four? I think she took four. I'm assuming. Oh, wait a second. Ooh, look, a shell. Oops. A shell that got away. Yep. Yeah, there's a lot of fire. Ah, there's a lot of fire. Okay, I have to take you guys out, this is going to be an issue. As it turns out, they were in fact an issue. Who would have thought? I like how there's the super dramatic Daredevil run music, and then you get up here and it's just the regular Camilla Cooper boss music. Can I skip this cutscene? The answer is no. No, I can't. I have to watch it. I don't want to watch it, but they're making me. Send help. You want to fire a shell right away again? Yes, you do. What just happened? I've never seen that animation before. I think I was supposed to get hit with the shell and die. But instead it kind of just bounced off me. Okay, I'll take it over death. The problem, with some, the problem with some of these comments is there's not much for me to talk about because I kind of talked about them before. I've already talked about these levels. Oh no. Of course, they're boos. 
I guess I can tell a weird work story. Um, I guess the first work story that comes to mind is the time I almost lost my foot. I, I'm a, I'll, I'll do that one next level because I need a little more time to tell that story. Also, she's just spawning in the center now and I somehow missed her. Don't tell more of these jerks. That's rude. This is a one-on-one -on -one fight and by one-on-one -on and by one-on-one -on -one, I mean I want less chance of dying. There we go. For some reason I was expecting that magic to go up There we go. She's done. I was kind of hoping we will have 20 minutes, so I could be like, you know what, that's good for this episode, we can save that, uh, lost foot story for the next episode. Now I'll actually tell it. Um, alright. As we do a secret star, I'll tell it. Okay, so we're doing something a little bit different for this. We're, basically, I decide I'm going to record this bit in post, and there's a reason for that. This story takes almost 10 minutes, 9 minutes 40 seconds to be exact. I spend the rest of this episode on this story, and it's painful, and it hurts my soul. So what I'm going to do instead is uh, I'm going to give you the short version of the story. That's less painful and not 10 minutes long. And then we're just going to do the rest of this episode in post. You know, so you can actually bear it. Okay, so let's start with uh, the story. So basically, I'm going to summarize it as best I can and not make it 10 minutes. It's that the story we'll get from time to time, we have to bring ice from the back to the front. And it was my job to do that. So we have to bring them on these big pallets. And we have these forklifts we have, which you uh, have to crank up. So I grabbed one of these and I took ugh, and I took it to the front. So uh, once I when I took it to the when I took it to the front and everything stuck on the like door frame for for something. And it got stuck on the door frame because we had to take it out to the freezer. So it was stuck there. And uh, me and three other employees were all like trying to get unstuck. Like Eventually got to a point where two of us were pushing it from the back, and and, and uh, two of us were, and the other two were pulling on it. So while I was uh, pulling on it, someone who was like actually, while I was pushing on it, I was pushing on it to try and get through. Someone was pulling on the handle, and and I think they were saying we should drop it, let it down, and they didn't realize I was still pushing on it, so they dropped it, and it landed on my foot. And be aware, this wasn't like a small little pallet. This was like a couple hundred pounds worth of ice. So it dropped down. And I still remember the sound I made when it dropped down. I just went... Mm. Like, I, less like I was in pain and more like I was annoyed. And, like, I didn't even really process what was happening at the point. So I didn't say anything. So, so uh, one of the other employees said, You dropped it on his foot. It's on his foot. And then... And someone's else was like, why was your foot there? Because I was trying to push on it, of course. Anyways, so uh, they were in a rush to like, lift it back up. They're getting it off. And like, the moment it's off, they're like, are you okay? Are you okay? They're, they're like, trying to check because they're like, their shirt is broken. I'm just like, looking at my phone. I like, I'm, I'm fine. And everyone's like, weird out, including me. And they're like, how were you fine? How did you do that? And I'm like, I don't know. So, anyways, we go through. We we'll go out for a little bit. This is like ten minutes later. And he's like, "Are you sure? Okay." And I was like, "Yeah, uh, yeah, I'm durable," which was what I actually said. But in my mind, I was going like, "Am I Superman?" Like legit, I was thinking, "Am I Superman? Am I, am I immortal?" Anyways, so uh, a moment later, they were checking the pallet and they realized. Where it lay on my foot, it was broken. So when it fell down, the uh, part of the wood lifted up so it didn't basically press on my foot. And I remember, like, earlier when I was actually getting the ice, we were trying to get out of the freezer. Uh, we accidentally broke the pallet because we rammed it into uh, the side of where you're supposed to pick it up. And so we broke it. 
and I did, and I'm realizing, oh yeah, I saw when that happened. Oh, I'm so lucky, because if that hadn't been broken, I would have lost my foot. And that's basically the story how I lost, almost lost my foot. I got super lucky, and I still have, like, the co-workers who were there trying to uh, talk about that. They're still talking to me about that, like, how are you so lucky how that happened? And to be honest, I don't know. And that's it, that's the story. I summarized it in half the time. And it still was a bit long, but honestly it was better than the original, which was painful. It was painful to listen to. Like, both me and Ollie, like, right the recordings, like, that was terrible. You told me that story better before. Ollie, Ollie was like, you told me that story better. How are you so bad at it now? And I'm like, I don't know. I don't know what I did wrong. I think the general idea is uh, you should always be prepared with what you're going to say for a Let's Play. I was not prepared for that. I was like, I need something to say. I need something to say. So I'm like, I'll just tell a story from work. And I think that would be fine. And uh, it, it 100% was not fine. So, uh, it just ended up, and because of that, I ended up, uh, wasting a lot of time. So, always prepare what you're gonna say. And I'm gonna try and be better about that, because I never prepare what I'm gonna say. And, like, the th good thing about recording this in post is I had plenty of time to figure out what I was gonna say. I had plenty of time to, like, figure out that story. I ran it through my head several times. I thought about writing a script for it, but that wasn't as interesting. Now I'm going quiet, because that wasn't because I was like running out of things to say, that was because I had to s swallow something. Anyways. Well now I don't know what to talk about, because like the story was the main thing. And my, and like the past me is still going on with the story, he's still going on. And that baffles me. Like, imagine if that story was still going, like you're getting unnecessary details, you're getting like, repeating several times. That's what it's like right now. Let's move away from that story. Let's see what else there is to talk about. I still have to fill three minutes of audio. Well, technically four minutes. Oh god. I talked for so long. It's so weird how I'm gonna do this. I... There's... Oh, there's two things we were thinking of doing. Because we did not want to leave this story in, like, the way it was. Because it was so terrible. So, like, the two things we were considering was... Uh, I was gonna do the quick summary and time it. And then, now, and then the other thing I was gonna do was, uh... I was going to, uh, t and then afterwards we would time the full story, and it basically because it took me four minutes to tell the story here, it would have added four minutes or so to the episode, and it was already kind of a long episode, so we didn't want to do that. We thought this was just better to cut out the original audio and just me record over it. I don't know. Maybe I'll keep that audio, the audio of, uh, me thinking of that just so it's like on a file somewhere just so it like still exists so you guys can still hear it you know maybe I'll do that maybe I'll make it so that one day I release it at least how terrible I told the story how bad I was with the details but or maybe I won't maybe I'll let it rot in the uh, abyss of nothingness I thought I said I was going to move away from the story of the story, and then I didn't. You know, like a liar. I'm recording this like the day this video is supposed to go out. I'm recording it early in the morning, then I'm going to finish editing, and then I'm going to edit this in, and do a couple other small edits, and then I'm going to uh, get upload. And, uh, it's kind of weird, like, knowing that I'm talking about this the day it's going to go up you know because usually you usually like i'm done with, with all recording like way in advance but i'm editing this morning of because i was going to do it the night before but i had gotten home from work and i was just so tired i was like i don't want to do anything i was trying to play link's awakening a bit and I'm like oh god this sucks i cannot do this and so I'm just like, you know, I'm going to bed. I'll bear with it in the morning. And now if this episode's late today, you know why. It probably won't be. I still got plenty of time before it has to go out. I got like seven hours. I have not said anything funny for like four minutes. This is almost more painful than the story. But at least I'm trying to switch around topics. I'm going to stop talking about it. 
Anyway, we're about done. I think past me is getting the star right now. I'm not actually watching the video. I'm just recording this on the audio program. Uh, actually, no, he's probably not getting the star. Knowing how I did this, because I went all the way to the end of the episode. I'll wait a little bit. All right. Well, I guess I should say, because uh, I didn't do this last time, if you liked this part, leave a like, George did. If you really liked it, subscribe for more like it every Tuesday and Thursday. If you didn't like it, there's a button for that too. And, and you can leave a comment. Tell me why. Follow me at The Real Game here on Twitter and follow Alinksa or Alinksa Art on uh, Twitter as well, as well as The Jazzy. Anyways, I've been The Game here. I'll see you all later. Bye. Can you please stop trying to eat the headphones? Was, is that what you were doing that whole time? Yes. Hold on. I'm gonna film it. No, keep, keep filling it. No, it's okay. Keep, keep doing it. Did you stop the...